Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist and the Cyber Geek Alliance has flown in a cargo shuttle that released a locomotive that brought to my doorstep a pre-production copy of DX9's Shigur, a man to whom reputation is sacrosanct and the toss of a coin is worth everything a human life could ever put at stake in a single moment. He's also very much an unofficial take on Astro Train. And in the case of this review video, a pre-production copy, too. You can tell because his window things are more yellow. It seems on the final version, they're more orange. There's an unspoken rule with filming Astro Trains, and I feel like being a drone, so let's start with Shigur's train mode. This is a very streamlined locomotive design, hearkening to low-stack models such as the Class J and GS Daylights. I may have plagiarized those names straight out of the TFW discussion thread. I love the shape, and I'm totally okay with the design deviation from G1. The colors are still clearly Astro Trainery. Unfortunately, while I like the idea of using the shuttle mode cockpit windows as fog lights, the end result looks kind of obviously made from parts of the shuttle mode. The main loco wheels are all made of die cast and spin individually, though not in tandem at all. And the connecting rails are entirely static and decorative, though given the nature of the transformation, I wouldn't expect functionality like them actually go and chug a chug a chug with the wheels. This train is pretty heavy and compact, not looking enormous next to a Hasui Masterpiece car. It's got some legitimate mass and feels like a fairly beefy stick in hand. And it is pretty long, all things considered. Oh, also the gun rifle firearm accessory mounts along the side of the train mode. It's replicating some kind of real world thing. I forget what it's called. Be an expert and correct me. Shigur is a complicated man and his transformation's pretty damn... complicated! However, it does satisfy my main prerequisite when it comes to heavy puzzle play engineering. Everything moves in defined chunks. There are two arms, two legs, and a folding center mass. And while order of operations has a hand in a smooth conversion, generally you can operate on each chunk separately without having to integrate sub-transformations through one another with pieces flopping around as you go. Also, there isn't a lot of wiggle room as far as where anything goes. There are pretty clearly defined stopping and starting points to most of the hinges and swivels throughout this toy. See? Click, clack, clunk. All the main masses clip together pretty well, but the finer tab connections are a little mushy on this pre-production copy. I really hope it all gets tightened up for the final release, as the major motions feel really good. The purplish arm chunks mostly swivel around, but also deploy a couple of boosters for shuttle mode. This looks tricky, but there's a slot on the outside that totally allows Shigur's weapon to become a tool for pushing the boosters out of their crevices. And while the foldy swivel is a tight fit, the tactile muscle memory is pretty simple. The other boosters are easy to deploy, and their housing swings down to clamp and seal up the shuttle mode's rear end. With a clean backside and thrusters aplenty, the final touch of opening the wings is as easy as wing thruster backside pie. Though the real final touch is the realization of landing gear through attaching the gun down below and flipping out some wheels. Set it all down, and what have we got? A cute, plump, pillow bullet of a space shuttle. The proportions of this mode have challenged a lot of people's tastes, and I guess my weird affinity towards the Armada Jetfire Astro Train of many years ago is what led to me feeling pretty okay about how Shigur looks when he's set up for space travel. This is far more of a cosmic cargo hauler than an atmospheric spaceship. Bread loaf shapeliness aside, Shigur's got all the wings and cockpit windows and rear booster arrays you'd want from a shuttle mode. Once again, the proper color palette comes through clearly, pulling the palette swap one might expect from an Astro Train as he goes from purple with gray highlights to gray with purple highlights. However, he also looks even less to scale alongside a Hasui Masterpiece car, mostly because the train mode more or less folded in half to get shorter and fatter. The main bummer I have with this mode is that the front part has a lot of moving parts that kinda align, but not as cleanly as I'd like. Hopefully this is addressed in the final production version, because as I said before, I'm looking at a pre-production version. See, I'm spreading it throughout the video this time, I'm not just laying it all up front. Maybe this will more subliminally lay the message down that this is a pre-production copy and not the final production copy of the toy. Anyway, welcome back to Transformation Town! The first thing to do when exiting shuttle mode is to put away all the little booster rockets. We won't be seeing them again. After that bit of cleanup, we return to the concept of Chunk Quadrant Puzzle Play. Farewell, tiny thrusters! As I said earlier, while there's a lot of stuff happening, it's all cleanly divided and executed through fairly straightforward flips and clicks that have solid starting and ending positions. 
With the torso back up in its train mode orientation, the legs and feet transform rather naturally from their shuttle positions. While it may look tricky, there's only really one track for these parts to travel through. But for all the snapping and pegging, I wish the purple nose cone stuff had a more solid resting place, rather than kind of just leaning up against Shigur's Achilles tendons. Oh, and don't forget to flip the purple wheel around or he'll be roller skating all over the place. The arms are by far the trickiest part of this whole toy, and for a fairly straightforward reason. After deploying the pectoral plates, cracking the purple sticks into L shapes, and snapping the chest together, you have to rotate just the bicep chunks 180 degrees. This never feels natural, and often involves parts kind of banging together as you're swiveling that little piece around, smacking through tabs and stuff. However, with the elbows pointing the right way and the hands deployed, it's much easier to perform the forearm fold that finishes the arm transformation off. Add the plank beneath Shigur's neck, and this guy is as bipedal as he's gonna get. And that is pretty damn bipedal. Shigur is blatantly Astro Train, and finally delivers a version of the character that has his cartoon peck plates, instead of the often used chest wing design. Overall, he's got pretty cool proportions, albeit with some fairly thin thighs, though they don't come off quite as twiggy in person as they do in many photos. Possibly even in this very video. This guy's advertised as a masterpiece alike, and quite honestly, he looks more like a Neo Classics take on the character to me. I mean, his pecs and colors are cartoon derivative, but this robot mode takes a whole lot of design liberties, many of which I am into. But like, let's take a look at his face. This is a cool head design, but it's anything but a current masterpiece style portrait. But, to say but a few more times, the design DX9 did put out has a lot of pop and sizzle. He's got some tasty abs, pleasant pockets of picked out color over the gray and purple canvas of his body, and shuttle cockpit boots that make me smile. Aesthetically, my biggest gripe are the semi-hidden, semi-distracting gaps in his forearms. They stay out of the way just enough for me to deal with most of the time, but when I catch sight of them, I catch sight of them. Shigura's rifle tabs into his palm, right? Kinda. It tabs more so into the inside meat of his knuckle joint, which means he can't really close his fingers around the handle. Luckily, the tab is more than enough to keep the gun attached, but aesthetically this may bug you a little bit. And yeah, he's tall. If Masterpiece was merely a height thing, Shigur stands proudly alongside dudes like Masterpiece Soundwave and Fans Toys Quakewave, which does mean he kinda towers over the Hasui car robots and can more or less stare down MP10 Convoy eye to eye. Putting him next to regular deluxes and voyagers yields a similar effect. No matter where you display Shigur, you've got to be ready to accept that Astro Train is a big-ass robot. Luckily, and perhaps once again due to that old Armada Jetfire retool, I feel okay with that notion. Anto Train has got a ball-jointed neck. He can look left and right, up until his cheeks bump into the wheels on the plank, uh, but he's also got a little bit of waggle, and a little bit of toggle. Just a touch. Could have been more, but I'm okay with that. His shoulders uh, have got a magnificent joint. Let me show you what I mean. Enough said. There's also a fairly tight, non-ratcheted outward motion here. Uh, one of the many transformation joints. Uh, but it works quite well as a piece of posability. His elbows have got a hinge for the full 90, and then there's another hinge up here if you want just a bit more. Again, I think that works great. His hands are trying real hard to be masterpiece -y, and I think they actually come uh, the closest out of a lot of parts of this toy. Thanks to the transformation, you can do a little bit of this. There's a wrist swivel, the thumb's on a ball joint, and then, kind of like the Hasui cars, you've got uh, these fingers moving as a unified curled block, and then the index finger moving as its own curled block, which can uncurl thanks to a mid-finger joint so he can point at stuff. The pointing part's kind of cute. Um, I wish that there was another joint inside uh, the lower set of fingers so he could have a more relaxed looking straight open hand, but whatever. I spend most of the time with this guy having his hand just balled up in a fist because I think that's where it works best. His waist does this. That's pretty good. The only bummer is, as you can see, this plate doesn't come with it. So uh, visually, that looks really good as a pelvis, but if you're going to start twisting him at the waist, you've got to start pretending this is actually a piece of, like, skirt armor. And there's sculpting right here to, to you know, satisfy the need for a textured groin. But, I don't know. I can't think of a solution to this. Um, but it was a bit of a bummer. Another bummer is he does not have any ratcheting in his hip joints uh, at all. 
And at first, I was like, what are you doing? Where is this technology? Uh, like, he's got universal hips, but they're just friction joints. And as you can see, if you, if you start trying to make them fail, they will happily oblige. They do the right circumstances hold themselves up decently but uh, the reason why there's no ratcheting in there is because for the transformation there's this whole geared assembly in here and I simply don't see room for ratchets uh, the way that this guy's aesthetics are and having uh, this thing interlocked and geared and it's a die cast piece actually I think um, I think it is felt like that when I got him out of the box I might be wrong but with that being geared there's no real room for ratcheting hips and that's a bummer. Um, I could have done without the gearing, like the interlocking, if it meant we could have had ratcheted hips, but I'm not even sure if the style of transformation joint that's being gone for here would, would have room for ratchets either way. So, I think it was a hard judgment call that someone had to make, uh, whatever the case. There's also a thigh swivel, and then a thigh swivel. So you can just have his thighs spin and dance all on their own. His knees are ratcheted. A little bit more lightly and, and less cash registry than the other ones, but they do the job. Then his ankles uh, have got very lovely amounts of tilt and a decent amount of forward and backward motion. So uh, something that didn't really shine through in a lot of the initial photography of this guy is the fact that he can actually assume a pretty good looking stance uh, when he's just chilling out and uh, you know tossing quarters and doing his business. So. Uh, yeah, Shigur, decently posable. Um, and if uh, on the final production version his hips come out tighter than they are now, uh, I think he'll pretty much be as posable as I could ask for, uh, given what else he's doing. Now, small elephant in the room, the plank. This thing makes his robot mode look pretty clean. And if we take it out of here, in my opinion, I think it's fine. Like, you know, you're looking at him like this, he looks fine. Even looking at him like this, given how much he transforms, I feel kind of okay with that. The plank is an improvement, don't get me wrong, but uh, let's go to another mode and talk about what it does for train mode, where the plank is filling in the back of the train mode real nicely. It's got these like little wheel things that look a whole lot like the G1 toy, although the plank has nothing to do with shuttle mode, it has nowhere to go there, so if we were to remove it from train mode, uh, the impact is the back of the train mode looks kind of empty, and there's stuff. I think I'd get over that. Basically, what I'm saying is, let's imagine the plank doesn't exist, okay? Shuttle mode's untouched. Robot mode has a little bit of mush around his head that I probably wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't seen the alternative. Train mode, I'd say, oh, it sucks that there's a gap back here. And that's all that would have happened. I think that the plank, it's a nice visual addition, but... It being here kind of just highlights how much it doesn't do for shuttle mode, and I don't know. I, I, I can't tell if this thing does more harm than it does good, and uh, I can't tell if I would have just preferred to have this thing, like, not a part of robot mode, and then have something built into this big thick surface up here to fold down to fill in the back, back there. Uh, I don't actually understand uh, what could be getting in the way. Like, it couldn't come from underneath here very easily. Actually, maybe it could have if an accordion folded out of here. Uh, or if part of this thick mass up here flipped down. I feel like the plank, if you can get over the fact that it has nothing to do with shuttle mode, uh, it, it adds a nice thing to the other two modes. And if you don't like parts forming, just throw it away and pretend it doesn't exist. The only thing that really suffers is when you look at the train from here. And most of the time, you're going to look at the train from here. It's an interesting idea, I just don't know if I get it, and I'm really curious if this is going to be on the final production version, or if something will change by the time we get to this thing's real release. In summary, Shigur is a heavily engineered and fairly fun Astrotrain. If you can accept the idea of Astrotrain being a leader-sized figure, he's very much made for a mixed Neo Classics display. As for Masterpiece shelves, you've got to be ready for some serious aesthetic dissonance. Shigur's design and surface sculpt walk a path of direct opposition to many modern tenets of Masterpiece Transformers, between his modernized alt modes, shuttle boots, and non-80s head sculpt, as well as all that surface detailing everywhere. 
All elements I am very happy to see, except for the part where it feels like everybody wants to treat Shigur as a masterpiece Astrotrain surrogate. He really isn't, in my opinion, unless robot mode height is your one and only concern for such a role. And that makes him a very tricky figure to define as far as purchasing recommendations. Astrotrain devotees will probably have a ball, especially since he draws so much more from Astrotrain's G1 cartoon appearances over the original toy. How do I put this? Okay, if you want a heavily engineered, big boy tall Neo Classics Astro Train, consider Shigur. If you're on the fence, I do highly recommend trying to get some hands on time with one if possible. He runs a price just steep enough to make it hard to slap a BUY IT sticker onto, though I do feel the parts count and engineering justify the cost. Speaking for myself, I was surprised to find that I really like this guy for his train and robot modes alone, with the shuttle mode feeling more like a pleasant bonus feature. Oh, and tweak all of these final thoughts as needed, depending on your own thoughts about the plank. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I hope this video has helped you consider the Astro Man known as Shigur. I wanted to get this done ages ago, what with his final release now appearing to be imminent, but hopefully the info herein still has been of service. But if you're stuck, trapped in doubt, and mired in your own personal code, just take that coin out of your pocket, the lucky one you've been saving. Look at it. Turn it around in your hand, and then call it. You've only got everything to lose.